All right, my favorite segment here in Webinar Wednesdays has become the tip of the week. And sometimes we talk about marketing, setting up your site. This one we wanted to talk about sites that are actively generating revenue with a sales team. So the tip of the week here is how to track revenue from your sales reps. Um, it's very common that uh, you have a site and you put a marketing team in place uh, or a sales team in, in place and you want to pay them based on the revenue that they generate for your site. Um, so we have uh, in the tip of the week uh, three simple ways to track your sales reps uh, revenue that they've generated and some of it ties into some of the new features that we added today on the search filters that we just showed you on the transaction history page. But Pat, can you tell us some instances or why it's important to track revenue and to do it accurately? No, absolutely. It, basically, what you want to do is you want to make sure that people get their due. If you're going to ever have people join your team, and most growing directories do have people join their team eventually, it's important you have a system in place that they can have confidence in because nothing will deter somebody from working on your sales team or promoting your website more than them feeling that perhaps they're not getting the credit for the, 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 the people that they've had sign up on your website. Also, for your accounting purposes, it just is important for you to make sure you're not over paying on on commissions and on payments to people that are selling uh, for your particular website. Awesome. And so we came up with three ways here. Um, one of them is to use the membership level settings that you have and make a membership level that each sales rep gets to use. And then obviously through the transaction history filters, you can search, search date ranges and um, the product that was purchased. So if the product is like premium level hyphen Jason, you'll know that, or an ID number if you want to use it, you'll know that that product sale is associated with that, uh, that rep. The other one is to use in a managed affiliate software. And those are really helpful because they add a lot of automation as far as paying out the sales reps uh, and things like that. But those, we'll, we'll talk about the pros and cons a little bit. Sometimes those require a little more complex setup and can sometimes be costly depending on the program that you use. Um, and then lastly, one of the features that we think is the best way is to provide your sales reps with their own coupon codes because now you can search by coupon code in the transaction history page. It's very easy to see um, if you assign a specific coupon code to a rep, which customers utilize those codes uh, during the checkout process. So let's dive right into it and talk about the pros and cons of these three methods for tracking uh, revenue. So Pat, this was the first one that came to mind when we were talking about this topic. So what are some of the pros and cons of assigning an individual membership level that a rep uses um, when they're trying to sell the product? Yeah, well, the biggest pro is that it is quick and easy to create a product for a specific sales rep. So let's say I have uh, Rick is one of my sales rep and I want him to start selling on my directory. I could create membership levels that I know are 100% dedicated to him, meaning I don't have that product on my website. Nobody can sign up for that product. The only way people would get access to that product would be if Rick, my sales rep, provided them with the link to, to that particular sign-up page. And if you go to the membership levels, I renamed a couple of membership levels in the interior designer, and I added Rick there just as an example. Uh, when you All of the different products on Building Directories have a sign-up page. So this is a custom URL. Had, had we pointed this domain and, and set up the SSL for the website, it would be on your domain. So it would be mydomain.com slash checkout slash 10. And that would be an exclusive sign-up page for Rick. So when he's selling to his potential prospects, he would be giving that link to complete the sign-up, or perhaps he'd be collecting the credit card himself, uh, and he'd be processing it on that form, however he would choose to manage customers he's bringing onto the site. Yeah, I think this model works great when you have five or less sales reps. Uh, you can just make a membership level for each one of them. Uh, so that brings us to some of the cons is if you have like a, a premium membership level and, and you have one for Pat and Rick and Jason, 
every time you you edit it and maybe you're you're going to change the settings for that you're going to have to do it for each sales rep so that the the members that are part of this membership level have all the privileges or restrictions that are assigned to your premium membership level so it's a small amount of of upkeep when uh when you when you have uh similar membership levels that for for uh different reps uh, and then what that what that turns into is you're managing a lot of products on your site at one time. Uh, so rather than just having three membership plans, it's going to be exponential based on how many sales reps are using those for their uh, using individual checkout pages for those products. But it is quick and easy, and it's easy to track that revenue on the transaction histories page. Just search the date range and the name of the product. It should have an ID or something that corresponds to the sales rep, so it's easy, easily identifiable. Yeah, and something else that that I find is just a little bit of, of a nuisance at times is that if you put Rick in the name, I did it for the sake of this webinar, but they're going to see that on the sign-up page. They're going to see that when they're logged into their account. They're going to see level premium member dash Rick. So it's not as simple as just putting their name on there because there are different places where that name's going to appear. I just did it for the sake of, of, of demonstrating that you can create different products, but then you probably have very similar names of products and you have to track them by ID. So the track could, could be a little a little complex and that could uh, hurt the confidence of the sales reps if there's not a clear way for them to identify which ones are theirs. That's right. Um, alternatively, instead of using the sales um, sales rep's name, you could use like uh, you can use an ID number that you come up with or just something that sounds cool to be part of the the membership level name like. Mm -hmm featured member and you could say like public profile and you know public profile is associated to Rick and it doesn't really hurt the sign up process for the for the customer at all. Correct. Something like that. All right, which brings us to number two, uh, managed affiliate software. So what is affiliate software, Pat, and how can this be helpful? So affiliate software is designed specifically for tracking and paying out people that are selling and promoting your website. Probably one of the things that it does, uh, that it's best at is tracking cookies, which means if I am a sales rep, I could be an active sales rep, meaning I get on the phone and I try to sell people to join your website or I go door to door and I try to sell your particular products or perhaps all I do is I get busy sending traffic to your website. Perhaps I do a Facebook campaign and I send a ton of traffic to a specific affiliate link. And what, what this affiliate software will do is it will keep track of who visited your website and which person deserves credit for that person visiting your website. And usually they'll track it for 90 days, sometimes up to 180 days. Uh, and if that person that you sent to the website signs up anywhere within that window, they don't need to sign up immediately when they click the link, but if they sign up in 30 days, if they sign up in 90 days, the person that's responsible for sending them to your site via the affiliate link will get the credit for that, and the affiliate software will, will take care of the payout structure, which is, which is really nice. Um, yeah, I think that that's the best part is they kind of you, – you keep a credit card or debit card on file with the affiliate software, and they'll take money out of your account that's supposed to go to the sales rep. Um, and it's all automated. Um, some of them even give you the option to void a transaction. Maybe the, there was a refund or it was a false sale or, or invalid sale. You can kind of stop it through the affiliate uh, program. Um, so, yeah, this is a great way to give your salespeople um, links to 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 your uh, your website, affiliate links to your website, um, and also maybe grow your sales force by getting lots of people to drive traffic to your website and rewarding them with a small percentage of whatever sales come from the traffic that they've diverted uh, or attracted to your website. Uh, the cons here is just requires uh, some setup. You have to kind of get some embed code and put it on your site. Uh, sometimes it's a little costly on the initial setup, uh, and then you're going to have to learn a new platform. I don't think they're terribly complicated, but you're now going to have to manage things on, on two platforms. But the convenience is that the payouts to the sales reps is not something you need to do with a calculator yourself. It'll, it'll automatically do it based on the percentages for the commissions or flat fees that you've um, assigned for that sales rep. That's correct. And I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of people that are starting out in particular, perhaps it's their first online business, and they're just basically getting their proof of concept. And they spend a lot of time setting up their affiliate software, learning that new tool, uh, 
like you say, oftentimes it's quite costly to get that set up. And what they don't realize is if you're just a startup and you just got started and you think you're just going to set up your affiliate software and people will be banging on your door to sell your website, there's no traffic, there's no value. It's very, it's a very competitive um, landscape, meaning that these, the people that sign up for affiliate software and they want to start selling products that can sell, they're, they're quite picky in terms of what it is they're going to want to sell. So probably this would not be where I would start. And I think you're going to introduce a, another one that I think is a much better option for somebody that's getting started and that they can easily track the sales and it's quite easy to set up and bring a lot of value to the affiliates that you bring on board. That's right. And that brings us to door number three here. That will be assigning specific coupon codes for each sales rep. So can you tell us a little bit about how this one works, Pat, and why I think we both and Rick think that this is the best uh, option, uh, whether you're starting or even if you're more established now with this, the new uh, transaction history search filter? Yeah, and, 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 and there's a lot of value with this. Uh, first and foremost, thanks to the new filters that you've introduced in the transaction tab, you're able to forever – track how much revenue you need to pay out to your sales reps, which means if I use a coupon code and I give a 20% discount on the recurring billing using that coupon code, as long as that coupon code is getting used, I'm going to be able to track that in the billing transactions. What's great about this is I would have my core products. I would have a basic level and I would have a premium level. Well, just for simplicity's sake, I don't need to have 85 different products. I just have those two products. And what I can do is I can create an infinity amount of coupon codes and give them to sales reps. At that point, when people use the coupon codes and they sign up, they ha everybody has a consistent name. Everybody signed up as either a basic member or a premium member. If I'm doing a marketing campaign to upsell my basic members to premium members, I don't need to do it to 15 different products. I just need to select that one individual membership level. So it really simplifies the management of your members. Yeah. So let me, let's go back to that. That's that kind of the, the dummy website with the, with the data in it, the transaction mm -hmm. data in it. Let me get there and let's actually do some searches for coupon codes and, and see what we can get. Let me pull one up here. All right. All right. So here is search for a coupon code, a coupon code VIP 25. So we can see for all time, um, uh, it's done this much revenue and, and there's past due and refund. What, what's really sweet is your sales reps are going to want to get paid for the work they did uh, during a certain month. So generally you pay out either 30 or 60 days after just to compensate for any refunds or credit card chargebacks. Uh, but what is today? That We're in October. So let's say we're going to pay out our sales reps for the sales they did not in September, but in August. So we okay. can go to the date range picker. Um, let's say VIP 25 is Pat's secret code that I have for him. So I know any sales from VIP 25 were, were from the sales rep, Pat. I'm just going to do a quick search here. So I know that um, VIP 25 generated five sales, $386, and Pat's commission is 10%. So I know exactly how much I need to send to Pat. Uh, for his sales in August um, as a sales rep for the company. And honestly, it's as simple as that. You can just keep track of how much you've paid out the sales rep somewhere in Excel, just so there's some history on that, and probably that you're going to send it with a check or your bank account. That'll record it for you anyways, um, and, you're, and you're good to go. Any other input on this, Pat? Or yeah, yeah I, th I think uh, just looking at the pros and cons list that you had up, I think another one that we haven't touched on is the fact that you're giving them a reason, a good reason to, to sell. If I'm a sales rep and you're telling me, hey, here's a promo code worth 25% off my website for life, a lot of you might say, but I don't want to lower my prices by 25% because I want to be able to charge this set amount of, of, of the set rate. What I recommend in that case is we just, you just increase the price of your website to give your sales rep an edge when they're selling. If they can offer to potential customers a discount, then they'll know that there's there, that you, those potential members are less likely to sign up on their own. What's really important is as a sales rep, I want to have confidence that if I send someone to your website and I give them that coupon code, that they're not going to find a cheaper or similar rate on your website because I'm not going to have the confidence that they're going to go through with that sign up. So these coupon codes gives your sales rep that confidence that, hey, even if they talk about the website, 
uh, they're going to definitely want to use that coupon code because that's the cheapest point of entry. Whereas the first option we shared doesn't give you that benefit. I might go to the membership uh, page to sign up and not sign up and browse the site and sign up later. And that sales rep wouldn't get the credit for that. So I really like this option. I do as well. And really, there's only one con with this. And it's really compared to the affiliate program. So with the affiliate program, if I send traffic to your site today, a person to your website today, the web browser remembers who that customer is and that my website as a sales rep send them to to you. Uh, so if they end up buying 10 days let, later, I still get the credit for sending them to your website in the first place. Um, and then again, the, the buyer must use the promo code to connect it to the sales rep. But as Pat said, if, if the promo code provides them with a little bit of a discount, they're incentive, the customer is incentivized to utilize it um, and everyone wins at the end of the day. So you lose a little bit of the automation that comes with affiliate software, but there's a lot more convenience with how quick and easy this one really is and how easy uh, and more about how easy it is to give out promo codes to your members and see the reporting on which promo codes um, are for new and recurring sales are being generated.